This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. We've got a moment of inertia by integration problem, and there's a little trick that is used on these problems in certain situations that simplifies the solution. And I want to demonstrate that. I'm going to do it two ways. The goal is to find IX and IY about the x-axis on the horizontal on the bottom of that shape and the y-axis on the left side. So we've got a curve described by the formula in this first example. It's the same curve, just expressed differently. Y is equal to 4 minus X squared. So if we have an axis boundary we can use a differential element dA that uh, is perpendicular to that axis. So this one of course can go both ways and I'll do it both ways. So for this first example let's say dA is this vertical strip perpendicular to the y-axis and as we've been doing on centroid problems let's define it as a rectangle base times height, the height is y at any point along the curve as we integrate and the base is dx. Therefore the little differential element is dA is equal to y dx. Okay, in this case we're trying to solve for ix and iy. So for iy it's kinda like comes off the equation sheet. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, from the equation sheet we see that iy is equal to the integral of x tilde squared dA. So for any point along that curve x tilde is just this distance here just x, whatever x is on that curve. So that makes the solution fairly straightforward. I have to do a little integration. But x is equal to um, just x tilde is equal to x squared and dA is y dx. So that's equal to the integral of x squared in our case from 0 to 2 we're integrating along the x-axis y is equal to this formula 4 minus x squared oops 4 minus x squared parentheses dx okay so that's pretty easy I just put it in my calculator or go to Wolfram Alpha and evaluate that from 0 to 2 I could almost do this myself probably and I get that that's equal to 4.266 my units are inches so this is going to be inches to the fourth power because when I integrate I've got x squared which is in inches and I've got y dx which is dA which when I integrate that becomes inches squared and so I have inches squared times inches squared, inches fourth. Okay. Then to integrate, I can't do, or the I can, but it gets complicated. I want to use a trick. If I, for I y, I mean I x, I want to integrate. I don't want to do. It's harder to do the integral of y tilde squared dA. So I want to take advantage of this basic formula uh, for the moment of inertia. It's over here in blue. The moment of inertia about a, of a rectangle of dimensions h and b, h high and b wide, about its base, an axis through its base, which is ix in this case, is this thing bh cubed over 3. Now the textbook shows how you get that and uh, just use an integration. 
Anyway, so I want to say that's what DA is. It's a little rectangle. B, the base is DX. H, the height is Y. So for IX, I want to say DIX, the derivative of IX is, it's from BH cubed over 12, I mean over 3, which is equal to B is DX. And H is Y cubed over 3. So I can rearrange that and say it's uh, one third y cubed dx. So that's what I want to integrate. It makes it much easier. ix then is equal to the integral of dx, dix, which is equal to the integral of one third. y cubed dx, which in this case is equal to the integral of one third y, y is 4 minus x squared. And I cube that because y cubed dx. So I put that into my integral calculator and it spits out the number, it took, took it several seconds to get the number 19.51 inches to the fourth. So, I accept that. I want to check that with my common sense. And the moment of inertia of something varies with the proportion of the height and the, and the width. So if it's twice as tall, like this one's four units, four inches tall and two inches wide, then I would expect the eyes to be approximately the square of that. So this one's twice as tall as it is wide, so therefore the eyes should be two squared or four times as big approximately. And that's the case here. The moment of inertia about the x-axis is 19.5, the y is 4.2. There's an approximately a 4 to 1 ratio there. So those, these two numbers make sense. The area is more spread from the x-axis than it is from the y-axis. So those numbers make sense. Another way to solve this, is because I have a y-axis boundary also, is this time I use a, vertical, a horizontal strip dA, which is y dx, x d, excuse me, x dy, which is a little rectangle x wide and dy tall. So for this, this case, ix is where I use the equation sheet. ix is the integral of y tilde squared dA. For each strip, y tilde is just that y distance along the curve. And so I have to rearrange my equation if I rearrange y is equal to 4 minus x squared, it becomes x is equal to 4 minus y to the 1 half power of the square root of that. So ix is y squared dA. dA is x dy, so I'm really integrating y squared x dy. And that becomes, for this expression, integral from 0 to 4 now because I'm integrating along the y-axis. y squared, y is just y, y tilde is y, so it's y squared times x dy. Well, x is equal to 4 minus y to the 1 half power dy. And so I can once again plug that into my integral calculator and Lo and behold, I get the same number, 19, this one really took a long time, 19.51 inches to the fourth. This case, with a horizontal strip, I want to say DIY, I want to go back to this blue rectangle with the y-axis boundary on the left. IY in this case is B cubed H over 3. So DIY 
becomes um, one third. B is that width x, so it's x cubed, and h is dy, so it's one third x cubed dy. So iy is the integral of that, diy, which is the integral of one third. x is four minus y to the one-half power. And then I need to cube that. So it gets pretty messy. dy. Plug that into my integral calculator and I get 4.266 inches to the fourth again. So we've already verified that that makes sense. So that's two different approaches. The key is using this trick it's really not a trick, it's just a mathematical uh, convenience, kind of, I would call it. And where I'm taking the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its base or about the axis on its side, bh cubed over 3 or b cubed h over 3.